making it a little higher and we're coming down 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 and I'm not I'm not gonna include this really rigid line in there I'm gonna make I'm gonna make you feel more pondish a little more natural and then we have water and what I can do is just sort of bring my tree remember my my ref if that's going this way, then in here it's going to be going that way. I'm not getting a whole lot of reflections, but I can bring some of these things down into my water. And water it out. Now, the tendency is to want to just really draw everything. But I would suggest keeping it very, very uh, minimal with the drawing. That way you won't, you won't be doing too many stops and starts. That way I can... I can I can underpaint this in big chunks. So, be a touch of something reddish. There's a lot of red in our greens. Now typically you'll see me use a phthalo blue, and I certainly could do that here. But if, if you use ultramarine blue to make your green, it'll instantly dull it. So that, because it's got a little red in it. Now if I add this yellow to it, because this, this is cad yellow, it has a little bit of red in it. And the, the two reds from both colors, they aren't that much but they're enough to gray your color. If I add a little white to this, you can see it's a duller gray. Whereas if I use the phthalo, I'm sorry, the, um, the Prussian and the lemon, I'll use that on the grass and get a really brilliant green. I might add a little bit more, a little more orange to that here and there to this. And I'm not even going to bother shooting holes in it or whatever. I'm just going to get a mask going up there. Yeah. And I add a little bit of white, because if I put it down like that, it's really dark. I mean, I actually do see some things that are pretty dark down there. But I might add a touch of white just to show off the color. It's just, again, red, yellow, and blue. But I am picky about which red, yellow, and blue. Depends on what I'm trying to do. So for these greens on the grass here, I'll go for the, the Prussian here. So watch what happens, I'll, I'll, I'll do it here. The Prussian and the lemon, and a whole lot of lemon, because it doesn't take very much, see? Now look at the difference between the two greens. You know, everybody always asks me, well, how come I keep getting muddy colors? Well, what's in your colors? And what's on your brush? And if you have some gunk on your palette, you know, you're going to have a problem. Now, if I put this green, that's a, uh, it's a really blue green. We need a bit more orange in that grass. So I'm going to go for the, the cad yellow. 
and maybe even a little bit of cad red although i do see that color in there i'll put that down first because it's very easy to take a just a not even one percent of that being red and it'll just completely gray the color so I'll put that in there first and bring it down here onto the dirt now if I just touch a little bit of red hardly any I get these little red moves little orangey grass in there And then maybe the light on the grass. Well, how about how about I just mass it in first? So you can see. Because it's real tempting to want to get into that light on the grass. Whew. But now we're going down into the, the red dirt. So, but it's not red. It's just redder than the green next to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take red, yellow, and blue again. <laughs> I said that's why I could, dip, I could dip it right into there. But I won't because I'll probably use that for something else. I could take, it's in the red family, so I'm going to use ultramarine, and I'm going to use CAD, because that's your, your redder yellow, and then a little bit of, and, and then I'm going to dominate it with this red here. Probably a little bit more yellow, and then... Obviously, that's too dark. I want it lighter, so I just add white. Probably got enough yellow in it to work. Is that light enough? May maybe a little bit lighter. Got a little cool there. Somewhere in that family in there. And I'll just mask the whole thing in like that first. And I've just decided to eliminate that that harsh lip right there. In fact, what I think I'm going to do is bring a little bit of this uh, dirt over here too, just for a little asymmetry in my design. Okay. okay. Now, what's happened? If the water's deeper you might get a more faithful kind of uh, reflection. But you're seeing a lot of the under stuff that's actually at the bottom of this one foot deep pond here. And um, so that's influencing the reflection. You can choose to put that in or choose to leave it out. It's, it's, I mean, it's, a, it's the question of, of, is the painting just a copy? Or is a painting a, a maybe a copy and your opinion? So the, your opinion would be the style part of it, and uh, the copy would be you know the representation of what you're looking at. It's up to you how much you want to represent it and how much style you want. Totally up to you. Okay, I'm going to take some of this some of this green down into there. Have you noticed, I, I can see right through this paint because it's kind of transparent. So I want to, what I can do is just take a little bit of white, throw it in that color, add a little bit more color to it, of the same colors I had before. And now it'll cover much better. And if that's too cool or whatever, just keep adding yellow. So the color, the white will wash out the color, so add yellow if you wanted to. Let's take some of that.
Sometimes when I'm really thinking ahead, I'll just take the top and pin it into the bottom as I'm going. I just wasn't thinking ahead. <laughs> I, one of my things with reflections, uh, I've noticed oftentimes I'll paint a really nice reflection in the water and it just, for some reason, it doesn't feel reflective enough. So I sneak a little sky in there. It works every time. I can't tell you. Sneak a little sky in there. You don't always have to have it in there, but it, usually there is a sky in a reflection and... I can't tell you how many times I've done a reflection and I'm thinking, it's just not working. Sneak a little sky in there, in the corner, even if it's not. Like, in my piece, the sky's way down here, and I'm only reflecting what's up in there. Um, so I just kind of cheated a little bit, you know. So as you can see, really no, no light and shadow on there, just, just massive. <clears throat> but, you know, I can see it from back here, I can see the painting. It just, it looks like the painting's got, um, is in shadow. Because they haven't really put any light in it. But from back here, if I've got that going, I, I feel, this is that point of the painting where, if I don't feel secure with it, I really need to make some big moves, you know, or start another one. <laughs> I'll pull out my palette knife and scrape it. All right. So yeah, this is why I didn't articulate the tree or anything in the beginning because I just, I'm just looking to get the, the big mass up there first. Now I can come back and give a couple of little edges. Here and there. <clears throat> and you'll find you probably don't need that much. I'm really not. I don't want a tree that big in my painting. It's going to take the whole thing over. So I'm just looking for a, basically a few edges and come back and shoot a couple of sky holes through it. Now, and generally there's uh, leaves and stuff in front of the sky holes, but a lot of artists will just leave it. They just leave it like that. So, it's kind of up to you whether you want to, like, you know, I could certainly shoot a branch through there, and usually in the sky holes is where you'll see a branch. Or just leave them. <clears throat> now that light got brighter, well. So, to kick up the value, of my yellow grass. I'm going to add a little bit of white in there. A whole lot of lemon. Let go from here. And the, just <laughs> not even 1%. Not maybe even less than that. You can always add more. I'll take a shot at it. All right, maybe I can take it down a notch. Okay, add a little bit more green. Maybe. Maybe a little bit of that cad too. But not quite as, I, I see that now, huh? I see them both. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start off my values like this. I'm gonna couple come down the hill. down the hill. Then while it's on my brush, might as well come back and
And by the way, when I go like this, it kind of blends in with it, okay? But mix the color up, and I just set it on there like this. See? It doesn't blend. It just sits on top. So when working thick and impasto, if you want, if you don't want your colors to keep mixing, don't work like this. This will push in or blend in and take it off sometimes. When you put it like this, like a palette knife, like a palette knife, you'd put it on like this. That's why it always covers with the palette knife. Oh, I could see a little bit more leafy stuff in there. also effective taking some of this light stuff back in back of whatever you're doing again I'll just set it on there see our cover in back of things as if the light's coming through it behind it then take your some branches up and over a couple of nice little a couple of little recognizable branches can help Just I'm just trying to break those lights so they feel like they're being lit from behind. So I take things over them, over the top, maybe even possibly a branch or something going that way. Just to kind of get the feeling of, that they're behind this. So by overlapping, you create depth. And then I love those trees and the, the, the trees just make it. And look how red the trees are compared to the uh, the green. The good sort of duality there. Sorry, did I drift off? <laughs> I was in La La then for a... When I start painting trees, I start going off and... Ooh. Be aware, I could go that way at any moment. You know, a lot of us, painting was the reason... Painting was always kind of your little thing. To escape things or whatever, maybe just you know, some people read, some people paint. So, oftentimes when I paint, I just go, my brain just goes off into la la land. <coughs> Everything goes away. Just an indication of some. I won't get too much into that. Although I'd like to. Occasionally, you'll get the light hitting the top of a branch, and you might get just a little highlights and things. And now you won't see those up here. You'll only see those down here. It needs something dark behind it for a highlight on top of the uh, branch to pop. See, if I put it on here, it just won't won't it won't happen. 
down here. Anyway, enough of that. And I'll bring that down into the my reflection. So it's leaning this way, so I'm going to have it leaning more this way. Getting the little ripple, so so just take a dry brush with nothing on it because what's happening is that you're getting the colors are moving into each other. You're getting the, you're you're looking over a wavy mirror. Think of it like that. So what's happening is a little bit of this is getting into that, right? And then a little bit of this is getting into that. So you're getting this. Uh, ripplization. So I'll take a little bit of this color and just bring it into that. And oftentimes those, because of all the little hills and valleys of the uh, reflection, you'll get a little pop, pop, pop like that. Little, little tags on the top. In other words, it gets distorted way down. And they're all... Hey, he's saying the right thing. <laughs> Take some of this. Take some of this dark stuff over here. I see a couple of little light things I put in there later. But they help, watch, if I hit a little light. Now, usually the, uh, the stiller the water, the more of a faithful uh, reflection you'll get. But, but the more wavy you'll feel, I've noticed that um, you'll get kind of Little value descri description, dis discrim discrimination, whatever. And so typically your lights will be a little darker, and your darks, like that dark tree, isn't nearly that dark in the water, right? Like that isn't. So your darks will be lighter, generally speaking, something like that. And the, the rest of it's light. I, I can take this color. Here's what I do I take that red color. I add a little white. Get about the value I like. Now, here's the thing. If I use that for my lights, I mean, it kind of works because the value will make it work. So this, this is one of those things where value is more powerful than color. But if you spice it right and you add a little warmth to that light and add a little bit of yellow, it's already got red in it. So I, I can put maybe a touch more red in there. But you know, something like that. See the same value, but a different color. Feels a little more dirtish. Couple of those. When I put those down, I just touch the surface. Just touch. Otherwise, it mix. I get the mixing. So I, I take that off and just touch. And oftentimes, I'll go over there. Now, these white rocks are really indicative of the arroyo. They would probably be there if people hadn't moved things around. I won't put them in there, but sure is a great. Uh, it's a great little additive and makes it look <clears throat> ready for my new word California impressionary impressionist no California impressionist -y. 
That's good. Yeah. With an ICA light. Yeah. Right, so they're very light rocks. I'll just pop one in right there in the shadow. One of my favorite things to do, by the way, is to take those rocks, I'll throw it like here, like halfway in the shadow and halfway in the light. So it's kind of coming into the light. Remember, on a white object, you're gonna have a very light shadow. The very light shadow, so. On a, I'll just put a couple. I didn't know I was going to do this. They're so easy. A couple of those little guys in there for fun. And then occasionally just plop a little light. If you just put pure white on there, it, it usually doesn't look right. You want a touch of yellow in that light, just a touch. Could you want something in the light? and something in the shadow. Lights that are coming into light. Lights, uh, I'm sorry, rocks that are halfway in the light and halfway in the shadow work. They just, they make it feel like light and shadow more. Probably because they're a light object. So now I'm putting that down into the, um, into the water there, I'll just kind of All right. Yep. No. And that's that's it. I would probably play with this edge a little bit. So a little bit of the sky gets into that. A little bit of that gets into the sky. So I'm just taking this stuff and moving it into the sky. And I'm taking the sky stuff and moving it into the foliage there. That's it. Oh, yeah. That's the ripplization. Sign. You gotta sign it. Do I want to sign it right over that reflection? I don't think so. Nice. It's one of those moves where if you like it, you leave it. You know? you know, sometimes you do things that aren't there, and it's a stylistic move because, I mean, or it's there, but maybe you pushed it a little hard. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe it's because your brain's telling you, you know, I wanted to push that really hard to get something out of the piece. Anyway, what it is is, you know, when you see something you like and you choose to leave it, even though it's not there, that's your style. You're, that's you saying, I want to emphasize this and not uh, emphasize other things. So, like even, I'm looking at the tree line back here. It's probably darker than this, but you chose to go lighter with it to de-emphasize it. See, that's that's yeah. a stylistic move. Wait, um, you can now see now what our to it looks like fire on the roof. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> From back here, Rob. Uh, it feels fireish. You can, I mean, those, no, those moves, ambiguous. I'll put them down uh, a little crazy, and then if I don't like it, sometimes I'll just leave it. Sometimes I'll, um, I'll mute it down a little bit. A little bit of, uh, a little bit of violet in your yellow will gray it a little bit. If, if, if it's too much, it's totally up to you. I think it's fine, but um, notice what he's doing here too. Um, the dark tree up against 
I'm turning the light tree up against the dark, the dark tree up against the light. And he takes the house and puts it over to the side instead of putting it dead center. And then he takes these branches and overlaps the front, making the tree really feel like it's out in front. But you know, I know a lot of people would just take their branches right up to here and stop. But you want to think about what a branch would really do. And then sometimes even if it isn't, sometimes you'll see them, they do stop right at the thing. But you, you just got to think, well, what would be a better picture? Usually overlapping creates, creates a better picture. And even though he put this diagonal in front of all these verticals, it really, um, it doesn't really detract from the, the painting. I think it adds something to it, really. Too many verticals right next to each other. Like you have this one, two, three, you know, all these, all these verticals. It needs something. It needs something organic because it's such a geometric thing. It needs to be warmed up. That's a, I think you should show it to the people that run that thing. I think they buy it and put it in there. <laughs> sure. Okay. I'll... What you should do is just take it, put it on your easel, come out here on a, like a Sunday <laughs> when they're all out here and they'll be like, oh, what are you doing? You know, the first thing they're going to say though is, where's the person fishing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the casting, it's the casting club. <laughs>